I believe the Lord has a word for us tonight, and I'm going to share with you tonight how to make a difference. Amen. We want to make a difference in this world. We're not just passing through like a nothing. No, that's not God's plan for anybody. Every single one of us. God has a plan and a purpose for our life. The Apostle Paul made such a difference. You realize that he still impacts the world today because of how God used him. Not only because he wrote so many books of the New Testament, but also, you know, if somehow... Uh, most Christians, if somehow we were able to trace our Christian heritage back to the first century, most likely it would have crossed paths with the ministry of the Apostle Paul. What a tremendous impact he's had on the world. What a difference he's made in eternity. So we can learn a lot from Paul about what it takes to make a difference. God has called every single one of us for a reason, for a purpose, to make a difference in some way. And you know what? I really believe it is, a, it is one of those basic needs of our soul. You know, there's certain things that uh, we just seem to have been born with. You know, there's, there's a desire to worship something. I mean, a lot of people don't realize it, but they worship something, you know, and this is one of those things. There's a desire in us to live a life of meaning, that we want our, our life to matter in some way, to make a difference. We don't just want to live out our days. And yet, it seems like a lot of people settle for that. We need to know how to make a difference. So we're going to go to Acts chapter 20, and we're going to begin, just read through 20 through 27. And I'm going to read from the NIV tonight. It just reads a little simpler here. He says, this is the Apostle Paul. He says, you know that I have not hesitated to preach anything that would be helpful to you, but have taught you publicly and from house to house. I have declared to both Jews and Greeks that they must turn to God in repentance and have faith in our Lord Jesus. And now, compelled by the Spirit, I'm going to Jerusalem, not knowing what will happen to me there. I only know that in every city the Holy Spirit warns me that prison and hardships are facing me. However, I consider my life worth nothing to me if only I may finish the race and complete the task the Lord Jesus has given to me, the task of testifying to the gospel of God's grace. Now I know that none of you among whom I have gone about preaching the kingdom will ever see me again. Therefore, I declare to you today that I'm innocent of the blood of all men, for I have not hesitated to proclaim to you the whole will of God. Living for God is really the only way to live. Jesus said, if we lose our life for the gospel's sake, then we'll find real life. We give up an ordinary life so that we can have an abundant life. Making a difference in eternity is a life with meaning and purpose, not just for the here and now, but something that matters on in eternity. And I think for the believer, I think that it, without that, it, it leaves believers just bored and frustrated because God has put inside of us a purpose, a meaning, something that we are supposed to fulfill. And without that, we will always be dissatisfied somehow. This really is supposed to be an abundant life. And you know what? I think the Apostle Paul, even with all that he went through, so much persecution, so much pain, so much suffering and hardship, things that he went through. And yet, I think that he enjoyed life. I think that he lived such an exciting, adventuresome life, so full of the works of the Lord and seeing the power of God and seeing lives changed. I don't think he would take anything for his journey. And I think it ought to be that way for us, that just like Paul, we live full throttle for the Lord, not holding anything back, just in reckless abandon for the Lord, you know, 
Paul's life was a great adventure, and ours can be too. God never intended for our spiritual life to be uh, a hobby, uh, a Sunday thing or a weekend thing. No, it's something that we live every single day. It's an adventure. And this life, I tell you, it is exciting when you're making a difference. So how do we make a difference? We're going to get to it. To make a difference, we need to know that we have a sense of destiny. <clears throat> you need to know what you're about, why you're here. You know, it's one of those questions that people in the world even ask sometimes. You know, why are we here? What is, what, what's our purpose? Why are we here? As a Christian, we need to have that sense of destiny that we know why we're here. To make a difference, you got to have that sense of destiny. The Lord told Jeremiah, Jeremiah 1, 5, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I set you apart. I appointed you as a prophet to the nations. Now, I want you to know that the Lord knew you too. Now, you might not be an appointed a prophet to the nations, but he knew you. And just as much as he had a purpose for Jeremiah, he has a purpose for you. There is a reason that you were created in Christ Jesus. You know, I, I talked about this verse Sunday, but I just can't get away from it. It's Ephesians 2.10. We are God's workmanship created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. See, there are things that God has prepared in advance for you to do. You were created in Christ Jesus for good works. So, yes, everybody's call, everybody's purpose is different in some way. But just like Jeremiah was created for a purpose, you were created for a purpose. And you need to have that sense of destiny that I'm here for a reason. We might not reach millions, but every one of us can make a difference. And we need to know that. Paul was called to be an apostle. He introduces himself that way. Paul, an apostle by the will of God. You see, you don't have to have a title. You don't have to have a position. But you need to have that sense of destiny that I'm here for a reason. You know, Paul had this destiny that he tells us here that He's going to go to Jerusalem, and ultimately, he's going to go to Rome. He had that destiny, and he knew that that was going to happen. It was not an accident. It wasn't a, just the plan of man. It was the hand of a sovereign God that we talked about last Wednesday that was ordering his steps. And, you know, Paul knew he, who he was, and he knew where he was going. You need to know who you are, and you need to know where you're going you got to have that sense of destiny. Now, I want to clarify to you because I know some of us, you know, in the mundane of life, sometimes we're like, well, you know, I'm, not, I'm just not all that. Here's the thing, though. We don't have to know all of the details. We don't have to know, well, I, someday I'm going to go here and do this and do that. What we need to know, though, is a sense of destiny that God is going to use me that I'm here in this world to make a difference in people's lives. See, you just need to know that your purpose in life is bigger than just living out another day, going to your job and living out another day. You have a bigger purpose in life. Anybody ever heard of Kraft cheese? Yeah, probably so. Well, J.L. Kraft for many years gave 25% of his great profits to Christ. He said his purpose was not to build his business as much as it was to build the kingdom of God. He was all about the cause of Christ, not the cause of cheese. See, I mean, what if, what if you sell billions of dollars worth of cheese? Who cares? But what if one soul is saved? That matters in eternity. You see, and all of us can make a difference, but we just need to understand that in some way, God wants to use us. We need to have that sense of destiny. So many lives just kind of in survival mode. Paul lived for a higher purpose. He says in Philippians 1, 
21 through 26, for to me, to live as Christ and to die as gain. If I'm going to go on living in the body, this will mean fruitful labor for me. Yet what shall I choose? I do not know, for I'm torn between the two. I desire to depart and be with Christ, which is far better. But it is more necessary for you that I remain in the body. Convinced of this, I know that I will remain and I will continue with all of you for your progress and joy in the faith so that through my being with you again, your joy in Christ will overflow on account of me. See, Paul knew that he was making a difference. He knew that if he stayed here in this life, that there were people that he was going to reach, people that he was going to help, and it was going to have an impact on eternity. And you see, you need to know that also. You need to know that you're going to have an impact on some people, that you're going to make a difference in some lives. You need to be convinced of it. In Acts 13, 36, in the NIV, it says, When David had served God's purpose in his own generation, he fell asleep. And we all understand that's code for he died. When did he die? When he had finished the purpose of God in his life. This great man of God made mistakes, but great man of God. When was he done? When he finished the purpose of God in his life. There are a lot of people that pass on from this life without ever having fulfilled the purpose of God in their life. What a waste. What a waste. No matter what else they did, if we miss that, we're a failure in eternity. But if you're still here, and you are, I see you. There is still a purpose of God for your life. For however however long you are here, there is a purpose of God in your life. And you need to have that sense of destiny that I am here for a reason. Number two, how do we make a difference? You got to have a divine inspiration. You know, there are certainly a lot of great people in this world that make some noble contribution to society. But you need to understand this. But for us to really make a difference that matters and especially that matters in eternity, it has to be from God. Jesus said, apart from me, you can do nothing. And I always say, you need to understand, you can do a whole lot of things apart from Jesus. He's talking about something that really matters. You see, we need divine inspiration. It's not just us. I think I'll do this. I think I'll do that. No, we need to know that Jesus is behind it. It can't just be our idea, and it can't just be our human effort. Paul said in verse 22, we read it. He said, now compelled by the Spirit, I'm going to Jerusalem. See, if we're going to make a difference, we need to pray and we need to follow the Holy Spirit's leading. You know, when it says compelled by the Spirit, he's not saying the Holy Spirit is forcing, he's got me by the back of the neck, he's forcing me to go. But he was compelled, it was on the inside, the Holy Spirit was pushing him, leading him that direction. That was where the Holy Spirit was taking him and he was willing to go where the Holy Spirit was compelling him. And I'm just telling you, see, we need that on the inside of us that I'm supposed to do this. You need a divine inspiration. You don't have to hear an audible voice. You know, you don't have to have some miraculous vision, but you need that on the inside that you you believe that this is what God wants you to do because it can't just be our idea if we're really going to make a difference in eternity. Apart from Him, we can't do anything. Romans 8, 14 says, Those who are led by the Spirit of God are the sons of God. See, when we try to do things without being led by the Spirit, usually we just end up making a mess. And I think the important principle here is is that we realize we need that inspiration. We need to hear His voice. We need His leading if we're going to make a difference. And we look to Him for what to do and what to say if we're going to make a difference. Number three, to make a difference, we need to have a sense of duty. Now, a better word would be responsibility, but I'm trying to keep all these with the D thing. Did you catch that yet? 
But we need that sense of duty. We need to understand that sense of responsibility to, that we can't shirk the task, the things that God has given us to do. You can't pass the buck. You know, nowadays everyone passes the buck. They say, let somebody else do it. Not my job. There's a whole lot of this in the church world right now. And I just want you to be reminded tonight that the body of Christ has always been intended to be a body where the Bible says that each part does its work. Every one of us, we have a responsibility to fulfill. And if we're going to make a difference, we have to have that sense of duty that there is a responsibility that falls to us if we're going to make a difference. Paul says in verse 24, if only I may finish the race and complete the task the Lord Jesus has given me, the task of testifying to the gospel of God's grace. You see, for him, this responsibility to fulfill this task was not optional. He had to do it. In 1 Corinthians 9.16, he said, Woe to me if I do not preach the gospel. He just had to do it. I think we ought to all have that attitude about whatever we do for the kingdom, for the Lord. In whatever way God might use us, we need to feel that same sense of duty. I have to do it. It's, to not do it is not an option. I can't just walk away. I have to do it. And sometimes it's uncomfortable. Sometimes it's not convenient. Sometimes it brings trouble. Sometimes, it, you know, there's going to be opposition. But I have to do it. That was Paul's attitude. If we want to make a difference, that has to be our attitude. Y'all don't get quiet on me. Now, see, we need to answer this question. What is your task? What is your duty? What is your responsibility before God? Now, some tasks are an assignment for right now. Some are a task that is for a season, and some are a task that is for a lifetime. But you need to know that where you are right now in your life, there is a task before you. So you might know what your ta- you might not know what your task is for a lifetime, but it, you need to know what does God want me to do right now. You need to have that sense of duty. I think most people who are not fulfilling their duty, their responsibility before God, they blame others in some way. They they say, oh, they won't let me. You know, I want to, but they won't give me a chance. They're mean to me. I just want you to know that people can't stop the plan of God in your life. Listen, if they couldn't stop the plan of God in the Apostle Paul's life, they can't stop it in yours. Because they tried everything. They stoned him. They beat him. Listen, they, they put him in prison. And the things that they did, in the end, it just seemed like it was propelling him forward in the plan and purpose of God. People can't stop the plan of God in your life. We have to take responsibility and say, you know what? If I'm not getting it done, it's because I'm not getting it done. We got to take responsibility and not pass the buck. I said this this Sunday, but, I, you know, sometimes people need to hear something a couple of times, even close together. So I'm going to say it again. You know, people didn't call me and they can't relieve me of my responsibility. And that goes for all of us. In verse 26, Paul said, Therefore I declare to you today that I am innocent of the blood of all men, for I have not hesitated to proclaim to you the whole will of God. He knew that he had done what he could do, and he said, I'm innocent of the blood of all men. I mean, he had a clear conscience. He knew that he had done the best that he could to reach people. And we need to know that. Do you know in the Old Testament, 
it talks about a watchman. A watchman was someone who was up on the wall and they would watch for an enemy army that was approaching. And if they saw an enemy army approaching, it was their job to sound the alarm. And if they didn't do it, they would be held accountable for the blood of the people that died. In fact, I want to read it. It's Ezekiel 3, 17 through 19. Son of man, I've made you a watchman for the house of Israel. So hear the word I speak and give them warning from me. When I say to a wicked man, you will surely die and you will not warn him or speak out to dissuade him from his evil ways in order to save his life. That wicked man will die for his sin and I will hold you accountable for his blood. But if you do warn the wicked man and he does not turn from his wickedness or from his evil ways, he will die for his sin, but you will have saved yourself. I want to tell you in our society, we can't relieve ourselves of guilt by passing the blame for our responsibility. If we're going to make a difference, we have to see it as our responsibility to do our part in whatever God calls us and not try to pass it off. I think that there are a lot of people today in the church in America that claim to love Jesus. They say, oh, Jesus, you know I love you. I love you, Jesus. They love to sing the songs. I love you, Jesus. But when it comes to their responsibility and the task and the things that Jesus wants them to do, they say, oh, I love you, Jesus. You know, that's all optional. I love you, Jesus. Reminds me of John 21 after the resurrection. When Jesus is having breakfast, some fish with the disciples. And he says to Simon Peter, he says, Simon Peter, do you love me more than these? And he's talking about the fish. Remember, Simon Peter was a fisherman and they were out fishing again. After the resurrection, he's risen. What are you guys doing? Oh, we went fishing. Simon Peter, do you love me more than these? Simon says, Lord, do you know I love you? Jesus says, feed my sheep. Simon Peter, do you love me? You know I love you. Feed my sheep. He ask him a third time, Simon Peter, do you love me? And the Bible says that Peter was hurt because he asked him a third time. Jesus says, feed my sheep. I'm just telling you, we don't get to shirk the task, the responsibilities that God gives us. And it doesn't matter what comes our way, whether it's convenient, whether it's comfortable, <laughs> whether it's difficult. I'm just telling you, we got to do what our Savior asks us to do. We profess that we love him, then we will do what we're supposed to do. Amen. You know what? Peter did love him. But Jesus is bringing him to a place that a lot of Christians need to be brought to where they realize if I love him, I'll do what he asked me to do. No matter what anybody says or thinks or does, I'm going to do what he asked me to do. If we're going to make a difference, you got to have that sense of duty. Number four, to make a difference... We need to have a declaration. Paul said, verse 21, I have declared both to Jews and Greeks that they must turn to God in repentance and have faith in our Lord Jesus. Now, you might not be called to preach, but we are all called to be witnesses of Him. We are all called to tell what we have seen and heard and experienced in our life. Every one of us that's born again and knows the Lord, we have a story to tell. We have something that other people need. Every one of us have something to say. Even if you're shy and quiet and introverted, I'm just telling you there's going to be those times, those opportunities, and you need to realize that you have a declaration. You have something that those people need to hear. We're supposed to be salt and light in this world. 
And I, I'm going to say it certainly is not just our words, but also our lives. See, everything about us needs to be communicating to the world that our God is real and that the gospel is real. The good news that Jesus Christ loves them and he paid the price for their sins on the cross. We need to have that declaration, that message. See, we're supposed to have a message that we're declaring to the world. It is the message of reconciliation. 2 Corinthians 5, 19 and 20. And he has committed to us the message of reconciliation. We are therefore Christ's ambassadors. You know, in Bible days, they didn't have computers and fax machines and text messaging, instant messaging and all that. They didn't even have, you know, primitive communications like telephone and telegraph. The only mass communication they had was tell a woman. See, I should have left that out. Now I'm in trouble. Ladies, Carmen told me to do that joke. I'm just telling you. So here we go. Let's get back to it. I'm telling you, if a king during this time wanted to deliver a message, an important message, he would send a herald. He would send what they called an ambassador. We are Christ's ambassadors. That's what we read in 2 Corinthians 5.20. Now we are Christ's ambassadors. He has sent us with an important message. We have something to declare to people. It is the message of reconciliation, that God loves them and he wants a relationship with them. Number five, to make a difference, we need to have a desire how bad do you want to make a difference? I think inside every person, there's something deep down. They want to make a difference. But how bad do you want it? Paul said, verse 24, However, I consider my life worth nothing to me if only I may finish the race and complete the task the Lord Jesus has given me. That's all he cared about. I consider my life worth nothing to me if only. If we really want to make a difference, we got to get to the place where we burn with a passion to see lives changed. If only. If only. If only I can introduce this person to my Savior. If only I can help this person get closer to the Lord. If only I can get this person to come to church Romans 9, 1 through 3, Paul says, I speak the truth in Christ. I'm not lying. My conscience confirms that in the Holy Spirit, I have great sorrow and unceasing anguish in my heart, for I could wish that I myself were cursed and cut off from Christ for the sake of my brothers, those of my own race. How desperately he wanted to reach them. Does it trouble us that they don't know him? I think this is where a lot of the breakdown is for people in making a dif difference is they just lack that real passion, the desire. They just don't want it bad enough. Romans 12, 11 says, Never be lacking in zeal, but keep your spiritual fervor serving the Lord. And here's what I want to say about this. God can give you a burden. He cares. And I'm telling you, get close to his heart. He can give you a burden. We just have to ask for one. Number six, to make a difference, we need to have dedication. Back to our passage, verse 22. I'm going to Jerusalem not knowing what will happen to me there. I only know that in every city the Holy Spirit warns me that prison and hardships are facing me. However, I consider my life worth nothing to me if only I may finish the race and complete the task the Lord Jesus has given to me, the task of testifying to the gospel of God's grace. Now I know that none of you whom I have gone about preaching the kingdom will ever see me again. Wow. 
I know that you will never see me again. That's dedication. He was willing to leave behind his friends, his brothers and sisters, his co-laborers in the, in the Lord. He knew that he would never see them again. Sometimes, you see, to make a difference, it's going to cost you. I think Jesus talked about that. He said, if you want to be a disciple, you got to count the cost. There's a cost. There's a price. It's, it's going to cost you something to really serve God and to make a difference. Now, I'm going to tell you the other side of that. Not making a difference will cost you. It'll cost you an exciting, joy-filled life. And it will cost you a great reward when you stand before him at the judgment seat of Christ. This is what the Bible says. I don't have time to teach on the judgment seat of Christ tonight, but I'm telling you, it will cost you a great reward to not live that life and make a difference. If we're dedicated, we'll follow through with our task and we'll make a difference. And if we're not dedicated, there'll come a time when we just decide it's too hard or we'd just rather not. Romans 1.21 says, I beseech you, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. One lady was at a conference, and she went up and talked to the speaker afterwards, and she told the minister, she said, She's got tears and everything. She says, I, I don't know what's going on. She says, I've gone to this church and that church and been to this meeting and that meeting, and I just can't really seem to, to get anything from God. And he said, ma'am, it's, the problem is not what you get from God. It's what you give to God. Amen. And you see, that's really so much of, of what this comes down to is we got to be willing to... Give ourselves as a living sacrifice. Be willing to truly dedicate our life to the Lord and to His cause. It's not, do I have all of God, but is does God have all of me? Our dedication to Him has to be absolute. You can't hold back on God. You can't draw the line and say, well, now, God, I'll do this. I'll come this far. I'll do that, but I'm not doing that. I think I've kind of sort of tried that a couple of times. It wasn't, it wasn't very long at all until I was doing that. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you draw a line, you're going to learn to cross that line if you're going to serve the Lord. I'm just telling you. It takes real dedication if you're going to make a difference. Last, number seven, to make a difference, we need to have determination. We have to run our race with perseverance. Paul said, now compelled by the Spirit, I go to Jerusalem not knowing what will happen to me there. I only know that in every city the Holy Spirit warms me that prison and hardships are facing me. Prison and hardships. He knew what was coming and yet he went. He was determined. I want to tell you there's always going to be tests, trials, battles, difficulties, persecutions, hardships. Paul knew. He knew what was coming because the Holy Spirit had warned him. And sometimes we know. But sometimes we don't know what's coming. See, I think sometimes the Lord lets us know what's coming so that we'll be prepared for it. It's like, okay, this is coming. You know, the Apostle Paul knew what was going to happen. He was prepared for it. But I think, you know, the Lord knows our hearts better than we do. And I think sometimes the Lord knows that if we knew what was coming, we would run away. I worked at church one time. I was, it was just tough. I mean, it was so hard. And I finally told the administrator of the church, I said, 
If I'd have known it was going to be this hard, I wouldn't have come here. Now, looking back, I know it was worth it. In fact, I wouldn't take anything for my time there because I, after that, I had some of the most fruitful, fun ministry I've ever had. But there was a time when I was like, if I'd have known, I wouldn't have come here. And I'm just telling you, you see, sometimes we know what's, what's going to happen and sometimes we didn't have any idea. But here's the thing. Yes, there's going to be hardships and difficulties and challenges. You have to be determined. If you're not determined, you won't make a difference. You want to make a difference no matter what happens. Just don't quit. Don't throw in the towel. You might have to regroup. You might have to get up over and over, <laughs> but just don't quit. If you quit, you quit making a difference. So if we want to make a difference, we need a sense of destiny. Why am I here? What am I about? What is my purpose? It's something more than just working a job and, you know, raising kids. And someday I'm going to retire and die. It's more than that. Your purpose is more than that. We need that sense of destiny. We need a divine inspiration. We need to hear from God. We, we need the Holy Spirit to lead us and guide us, order our steps. We need some direction from the Lord. We need a sense of duty. We can't pass our responsibility off to somebody else. No matter what happens, we are going to give an account to God. We need a declaration. We all have something to say, something that others need. We can't hide it. We got to share it. We need a desire. We need to care like our heavenly father cares, like Jesus cares. We need to pray that God will give us that kind of a burden, something that we just can't ignore. We need a dedication. We've been bought at a price. We belong to him. He died for me and I'm going to live for him and die for him. That's powerful. You see, the world can't fight that kind of dedication. <laughs> That's how those first believers turned the world upside down. The Bible actually says that. They turned the world upside down. That's how. It was because there was no backing down for them. They were dedicated to give their lives if necessary for the cause of Christ. And I'm telling you, that's what we need if we want to make a, a difference is that kind of dedication. And we need a determination that we never quit. We just keep going and we will make a difference. Tonight, I close with this thought, this challenge. Prayerfully, prayerfully consider which of these you have and you don't have, you need to work on and ask the Lord to give you what you need to make a difference. All of us can make a difference. I want you to stand with me. We're going to pray.